Hello and welcome to the Living Harmony podcast. My name is Manuela Ola. I'm a shamanic coach and the founder of the Living Harmony. Today I have my wonderful guest, Yuson from LA. Yeah, the big city. Hello, your son. How are you? Hi, Manuela. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. What's your time in LA? We are nine hours apart. Yeah, right now it's around noon. Oh yeah. wow, amazing! So your son and I, we have met in August 2023 at the beautiful Arthur Finlay College in the UK. And it was so amazing how we met. I was having just a little story. Um, I was at the dining table all by myself because my group did not show up for breakfast. I was all by myself eating my breakfast. <laughs> and then next to my table was Yuson sitting with my roommate and some other colleagues. And my roommate said, oh, Manuela, why don't you join us? And I was first fine, and then I felt a bit lonely. And then there was a seat next to you. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I'm here to meet new people. I sit by myself having breakfast. And then I moved over to the um, next um, dining table. And then this is how we met, and we connected instantly. And this is how it goes. Go with the <laughs> <laughs> it was so wonderful to have you and to meet new people because we were actually prohibited from moving to different tables yeah it's so like awkward. it was a good reason for you to join us and oh my gosh I feel like I'm so blessed to know you yeah me too oh I love to meet new people and I think it's so amazing and I love it um to be like in this international group so we meet people from all over the world from Australia, <laughs> LA, Hong Kong, <laughs> any country is represented at this college. It's really magical. Yeah. Germany, Holland, it was, yeah. I mean, so many amazing people. It's really interesting. And was it the first time for you over there? It was. I mean, I've studied the spiritual arts for many decades, but it was my first time there. I was really excited. Um, it felt like university and also high school at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I like to call it Hogwarts for the adults. Exactly. <laughs> and you got to meet amazing people and, and the teachers were amazing as well. So, Yeah, I loved it too. I thought it was also uh, another magical week in my life. Would you, son, would you like to introduce yourself and give us... Oh some exciting insight about your fascinating pathway and life. Yeah, sure. I'm Yusan Shin. My name rhymes with Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, I'm based in LA. Um, I have been studying the healing arts for about 30 years. I'm a Reiki master, but I also utilize the Bankston method, which is great for cancer. Um, I do a lot of Akashic Records clearings. Uh, past life clearings, karmic clearings, and even ancestral clearings, because sometimes the traumas that our ancestors experience gets passed down in our DNA. And so, um, you know, I, I feel really privileged to be able to clear that for people so it doesn't go down future generations. Uh, I also, you know, talk to dead people. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that movie, Sixth Sense. Um, uh, <laughs> and I can talk to animals as well. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> How do you cleanse this ancestor's DNA? How does that work? Yeah. So I use, uh, I couple it with uh, the Akashic Records, and I can go into past lives, this life, and future lives. And so I combine it with muscle testing and I see how far back it goes. And then I clear it from their, their soul, their DNA, their records. And it, it generally tends to work to stop uh, trauma. 
um, yeah. before it goes down to other generations. Like um, there's a scientific study that was done like um, on women in Holland right around World War II and they didn't have food right around that time. And so they studied them and then their offspring, their children. And they found that their children tended to be obese because their mothers were half starved. And so that gets ingrained in their DNA um, that they need to eat um, in order to survive. And so things like that gets passed down. Um, they also did studies on mice where one generation was shocked while being paired with um, the smell of cherry blossoms. And even when they had um, the mice had babies, the babies never were shocked. But every time they smelled cherry blossoms, they would shake in fear. <laughs> oh. So yeah, so it does trauma does get passed down um, through wow yeah everything so it does make an impact so the the clearer we go with our body with our mind and our spirit the healthier we can stay yeah wow this yeah. is amazing and so do people have to come to your place or can you do it like i'm in switzerland could you could you do this like in a, as a distant yeah healing? how do you call this healing or cleansing I well, it's healing by way of cleansing. So the cleaner you are, it's like maintaining, like brushing your teeth every day. Like the, the clearer you can be, the healthier you can be. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that you do the same using shamanistic techniques. So it really doesn't matter which technique you use. It's whatever calls out to you. But, you know, working with some powerful people like you um, really does help. Wow, this is amazing. So people don't, don't really have to come to your place physically. So I don't have to fly to LA and see you in person <laughs> to get my no. cleansing. You can do it also from distance. Yes, it's all distance. I used to do uh, in-home because um, I work out of my home. Um, but I found that it works just the same uh, on the phone and on Zoom. So it's my oh. client's preference and it works just the same. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> and how many years have you been doing this? I've been um, doing this uh, full time um, in addition to a corporate job for over 10 years. Amazing. Yes, corporate jobs. Everyone has been in a corporate <laughs> job. Me too. <laughs> I left the bank um, 16 months ago. I had to turn 50 before to get my to get the courage to move out of a um of a good salary and leaving everything behind and following my soul's purpose how about you when was yeah. your trigger point <laughs> <laughs> um so i was released from the corporate prison <laughs> last november i released myself <laughs> but wow. you know it took me, I mean, I'm, uh, I think I was 54. So I, I'm right there with you in my 50s. But it feels like the corporate job is a, a necessary safety net um, until we can, you know, get our businesses going and word of mouth going because I don't really advertise. And I'm sure like, just people find you if you're good, just like mm -hmm. they find you Manuela, right? So, but the corporate job was a form of security, my security blanket. <laughs> yeah. And what was the point? So you, you left the company when you said, did something happen that you said, oh my God, I cannot look at these people like when it, it was in my situation. <laughs> I think the universe has a plan that's bigger than all of us because yeah. I really wanted to hold on to that security blanket for longer, but mm -hmm. the universe sent me two bosses back to back that were just terrible to work for. Mm -hmm. And um, it became a very easy choice then to go to full-time healing and only doing that because I was doing both full-time. Um, 
So the universe kind of guided me <laughs> by showing me. <laughs> yeah. And, and you listened, you know, some people don't listen. They just stick to the corporate job. No, what, no matter how big the war is and the feud and whatever going on and the, yeah, all these challenging things to be <laughs> to be mindful. Yeah. yeah, but you know, if you don't listen, they keep sending you more and more challenges. <laughs> so oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think when I was like talking to other ladies at the college, like in our age, it always started with the job. I think mm -hmm. the universe says, "Okay, let's give first an easy task." the corporate job and then as you said you had managers which were challenging and yeah and and another friend of ours and um, Carmela she was at my dining table <laughs> um, she had the same she also said um, yeah they took away my work after 26 years and it always starts with the job and also in my case but it started um a lot. It started like before COVID. It was kind of okay-ish. I could live with it. But then during COVID, I was so thankful we had home office. This was the biggest gift in the world <laughs> to stay at home. <laughs> yes. And it was also for me, the work situation and then post-COVID. And then I realized I don't want to go back to an office. I don't want to <laughs> do this work. No, I have another purpose in this life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who've transitioned from corporate to doing healing or intuitive work full time. And, you know, one of the reasons they don't want to leave is because they're so good at what they do. And I'm sure you were <laughs> exceptional too. So I was considered, you know, a very, um, strong real estate and corporate paralegal. So a lot of people reached out to me to hire me. They wanted to keep me, but um, you know, it's hard when you're good at your job to go and do something for yourself, yeah. but it's yeah. so much more rewarding, right? Absolutely. And I, I sometimes say, well, it was like a comfort zone, but to be honest, it was like a fake from me personally, it was like a, a fake comfort zone. I didn't like the people. I didn't like the work. The only thing was the paycheck by the end of the month, which was gone mm -hmm. anyway, with all the taxes and inflation and rent and health insurance, you know, it comes in, it's out like this. Yeah. And it's like, then you, when I turned 50, it was like, no, that's not, the, I cannot, no, that's not the case. <laughs> no, this is, this is not my soul's purpose to stay there until I get <laughs> officially retired. No way. No way I will do this for the rest 15 years. So yeah, yeah then I started my to do like a strategy plan and here I am and following my intuition. And then I had at the college after we came, I came back from the college, I had this intuition to start a podcast. Oh my God, I met all these beautiful, interesting people and women. We should get together more often and spread yeah. the world. And spread yeah. the word. And it's I never love too late. Supporting of one another. Yeah. Women supporting other women and people within our fields. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing what you're doing, like getting people together and also spreading the word and showing you know people what's out there and who's out there who can help so it's really wonderful yes and i think we should demo, we should show that it's never too late 50 plus and fabulous i like to call it <laughs> that's right i'm in that team <laughs> the 50 plus and fabulous team um <laughs> That it's never too late. You know, sometimes I say, oh, I wish I had done this 20 years before, but I probably had to go through this corporate life yeah. and make all the experiences, which I'm grateful for. But now I thought, yeah, last year in June, I thought, yes, time ahead. The universe has more on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> but you look so happy. I'm so much happier, too. So yes, I think it's... Too. 
<laughs> and and I had today a client reading on um, planet code astrology, and the lady was 74. And yeah, she was said, oh, I wish I had known this before, 20 years earlier, but it's never too late. No. Never, never. And I feel so grateful because, you know, whenever, if I was younger, um, I probably wouldn't have the wisdom and mm -hmm. the deep appreciation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I need to go through all of those hardships in order to really be appreciative of what I can do now and really get the confidence too. Yes, thing of confidence, absolutely. Like 20 years ago, I don't know, I had other things in my mind. Yeah, I have, I always like to say, sometimes I say, oh, I wish I had, da, da, da. but honestly, it always has its divine timing. Yes, exactly. And, you know, none of it is a contest. I know some people like to compare themselves to other people and their success. But I just, you know, I want to be a cheerleader for everyone who's on their path and, you know, honor their timing as well, as well as my own. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like when I feel like it's it's a good thing to do and the right time, it's it's time to move. But I don't hold that to other people, right? Yeah. Yeah, we should never compare to others. Never. Everybody <laughs> has its own special timing but what would you tell like um, a 20 year old you son what would you tell your younger self with the knowledge you have now <laughs> i would say that um all of the hardships really um have the value of um experience and without that experience i wouldn't you know be as strong and capable and and know what I can and cannot do. And again, the confidence um, to not only be strong for myself, but help others. Um, it's kind of difficult if you're questioning yourself to then help others. And and not from an ego place, but from a, you know, I've, I've been around the block a few times. <laughs> and so I know kind of, um, you know, what works and what doesn't work. Um, and again, everyone's different. So you have to kind of tailor each session to the person that you're working with and honor their process. Yeah. So do you have many people coming into you in person or do you have like more Zoom clients? I think all of my sessions are on phone and Zoom after COVID. And I found that it works just the same or even better because people aren't frazzled from fighting traffic to come see me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's a time saver, actually. And so they feel more at peace at home. And so they can open up to um, whatever clearings and healings that I can provide. Yeah, yeah. This is what I also experienced. The distant healing words, sometimes better. Yeah. Because exactly the the stressful point of getting from A to B and you're in traffic jam, you have to catch a train, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so much better to do distant healing. So yeah, in the comfort like, of your own home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, and you it's better for both parts. Exactly. <laughs> because I had clients that would come and see me for a session. But they loved the energy so much, they didn't want to leave. And then the, <laughs> the next client would come and just wait. And they, you know, you, you can't have two people in the, the room at the same time. So it was kind of, um, it became kind of problematic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it, it's, it's really, yeah, it, it's fantastic that all this energy healing works as good as uh, or even better from distance yeah so and what was so people come in to see you for example as what was your biggest healing success um well I always tell people my clients that I like to save them time and money so I try to get to the root cause of their physical or mental issue and uh 
one one client uh well actually there are two really big clients one client came to me she was having stomach pains for years after eating and she went to doctor after doctor after doctor no one could find what the reason was um and there were many tests done on her um she came in for one session i cleared a past life issue um that was emotionally traumatic and after that it was gone <laughs> so it took one session i wish all of my sessions would only <laughs> it was one and done but it's not that way usually it comes off in layers but that was like a a really instantaneous healing um another client that was really impactful she um, has a genetic predisposition to colon cancer and um, she had a mass the size of a grapefruit in oh. her colon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and pretty much the regular oncologist told her you know you should seek palliative care which means go home and and die oh, die yeah so um she came to see me we worked together for six months she had a colonoscopy and uh it was gone wow and she's oh this is amazing i love it when my you know when my, my clients and um experience like miracles really mm -hmm. yeah there is so much other it's another proof for the ones who are still in doubt. There's only the physical body. There's so many layers out there, you know, this, um, this I don't yeah. know, aura, chakras, and even beyond ancestors and, and beyond exactly. comprehension. We don't really realize how everything is connected. Yes, absolutely. So what are like, do you have a special story that you can share? I want to hear your stories. Oh, my God, my stories. Yeah, I had also a client with um, stomach issues. So he had like six months stomach issues and the same went to the doctor. The doctor said, everything is fine. <laughs> and then he went the second time and everything is fine. But he still had this this tension after eating. Mm -hmm. So we did a few, came to see me like three times and then I did um, crystal healing. So I put all the crystals on the chakras correlating to the colors. We did um, sound healing with a sound bowl and I used the shamanic bra. You see my bra, my baby. Yeah. That's my <laughs> healing bra. This goes so fluffy and then i use <laughs> yeah so like the chakras we all know this so i put the crystals on the chakras use the sample the healing and the shamanic healing drum and it took him five at uh, three sessions and it was gone yeah absolutely it amazing might, it doesn't matter what technique sometimes like you seek the right healer for you and like you used a different technique, I used a different technique, but we helped our clients. Yeah. It was so interesting before I do um, the healing, before I did the healing, I like to, of course, I check the chakras with my pendulum. Mm -hmm. right here. So I go from chakra to chakra to chakra and see how the pendulum is moving. And yeah. if the chakras are um, in a good mood, they're moving clockwise. Mm -hmm. And that client with the stomach issues, the, the pendulum was going counterclockwise. Right. And it was so amazing to see the difference. And <laughs> yeah, it was a, the pendulum goes a counterclockwise and you think, wow, <laughs> it's so amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. So you use the pendulum, but I use muscle testing, kin ah. kinesiology. kinesiology. So yeah. I do Mm hmm. So <laughs> sometimes there are many ways to get to the, the truth with the capital yeah. T. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this was mm -hmm. so such an amazing experience that, yeah, that it was it was gone after three sessions. Yeah, it's amazing. And then I also like to work with um flowers, remedies, herbs, 
And the yeah. dandelion is also correlated to the stomach, to the solar plexus chakra. So in mm -hmm. the springtime, I collected um, dandelion around my house in the garden and I put in, I let them soak into a bowl, into a jar of vodka. So mm -hmm. the vodka, <laughs> yeah, you can drink it. <laughs> So the alcohol extracts the ingredients, the healing ingredients. Then I filled it up and yeah. So if people like to buy it, um, yeah, they can have the jar or sometimes for myself, if I have like, I don't have any issues normally, but if you have like eaten too much or you think, oh my God, this was a little bit too heavy. <laughs> then you just drink a little sip of this vodka dandelion extract. It's like a tincture. And mm -hmm. um the stomach feeling is gone. So it's so interesting to see the nature, how nature colors are correlated to the chakras. Yes. So dandelion is um, uh, a yellow flower and the solar plexus is yellow. It's all correlated. Yes. So mm -hmm. yes, it's amazing. <laughs> Everything's related. <laughs> yes, we're all connected. So all humans are connected. We're connected to the animal, to the trees, mm -hmm. tree hugging. And you said before, you can talk to the animals. Yeah. Oh, do you have a story? Have interesting stories. I actually um, met uh, someone who um, joined my Bankston practice group and met them for coffee. And she brought her dog. Um, who just uh, had one um, leg amputated for um, osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer. Oh. And I met this dog for the first time. And I asked the dog, like, just, you know, how are you doing? Um, how How is your, uh, she has a doggy brother. <laughs> and I said, how's your brother? And she told me, oh, he's so clingy. He, he wants to be with me all the time. And I asked her, her human, um, is this true? And she's like, yes. <laughs> when she goes on her bed, her brother wants to <laughs> be right next to her. And so <laughs> lately she's been wanting to have some space. And that's exactly what she told me. She's like, oh, my brother's too clingy. How did you learn this? How did you find out about this ability to talk to the animals? Well, I did a lot of healing for animals, um, for different cancers and things like that. And so I found that they, each of them had a different voice. They, they have different wants and desires that they want to be able to communicate to their human. Um, and, you know, sometimes like I could hear it using my intuitive skills. And it's the same as if I would, um, you know, intuit into how you're feeling and, you know, what you're thinking. It's the same for an animal. They, they have very similar um, communication styles. They just can't vocalize it. Yeah, yeah. And you connect telepathically with the animals? Yes, that's exactly how I communicate. Wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> I just have to say, I was dog sitting a couple months ago, um, an American beagle. Oh. oh, he was so cute. Oh my God, <laughs> he was so They're adorable. All so hmm? <laughs> They're all so cute. I love the animals. They are so cute. But he was a piece of work. He was a two-year-old. He wanted to walk every day for hours. And you know? Oh my God. <laughs> in the mountains, here in the mountains. It's so steep. You know, you either walk up the hill or down the hill. There's nothing flat. Right. And he was he was so adorable. And when he came in the morning, we had it we had him for the weekend. And in the morning he was like on my bed <laughs> wagging his tail. <laughs> Six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, asking for a morning walk. <laughs> yeah, but I have no morning hours. <laughs> And he was yeah. so cute. I really want him to dog sit again. He's such an adorable doggy and such a friendly soul. <laughs> Amazing. And only the cat coming to me. Oh, three weeks ago. What? Three, four weeks ago? 
I had a cat in my garden, meowing, meow, 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 at 10 p.m. Wow. And I, had, and I had no clue where this cat is coming from and why. So I fed the cat and I said, mm -hmm. okay, Katie, you have to go home. But the cat didn't leave, of course. He, of course. He, the cat adopted me. <laughs> well, animals love healers. They just want to be in the healing energy. <laughs> I was always wondering, what did this cat come to me? But it was a, it was so interesting how everything worked out so well. So the cat came to me. I had no clue. I fed the cat, made him a little bed with a um, blanket. <laughs> yes, I'm like hotel cat, <laughs> hotel kitty. <laughs> hotel oh, I wouldn't want to be too. <laughs> You made things too nice. Yeah. So I fed him with a super expensive ham. In the morning, he got the salami. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you treated the cat so well, he didn't want to leave. Yeah, I love animals. And the cat was such a cutie. And then I thought, okay, what I'm going to do? So I sent a picture of, of the cat. I put it on Facebook. Nobody replied. <laughs> and then I sent the, the, a photo of the cat to a friend who lives like two villages from my place. And then he responded to me at eight o'clock in the morning with a sign, missing cat. So this cat had been missing, had been gone missing for about three months. Oh my God. And you yes. found him. And he well, found you. He found me. And then there was a phone number on this missing sign. It was a big missing sign all over the place. So yeah. I called this number. And then this lady picked up and she said, first she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So many people called. I don't believe anymore in miracles. You know, she was very negative. And I said, no, this is your cat. And then she said, well, I live two hours away, but I have plans to come to the mountains anyway. You know, coincidence. So she came two hours later. She was supposed to visit friends, which she did. And then she came to my place, which is like 20 minutes from her um, friend's place. And it was her cat. Oh my and God, I, how did the cat walk two hours away? Yes. No, she was on vacation in this uh, mountain area where I'm located at the moment. She was on vacation and she was going out for a cat walk cat yeah not the cat walk. She, she walked the cat on a leash and the cat disappeared okay. oh yeah something distracted him and he got like shocked and i don't know he just re released himself from the leash and yeah. ran off so they started like a, a search and they, they left they left the, the vacation place moved back to zurich and, they, and she said, I prayed every day to God that my cat is coming back. Oh. Yeah. And so this was like, a, this was like 24 hours of happy coincidences. Yeah. <laughs> but the cat <laughs> came to me. I rang, I sent a picture to my friend and, and I called the number of this missing, on this missing sign and the person planned anyway to come to this area. So it was like, they took the cat to the vet and then they confirmed that the cat was really the real one. <laughs> That's an incredible story. I love it. Yes, yes. It's hard to believe. I thought it's, wow, why is this cat coming to me? <laughs> That's how the universe works. And, it, you know, usually the healers, intuitives like you and I, we listen. Mm -hmm. And everyone can do it, but they just don't listen. Yeah, and I love this cat. And if your cat was meowing so hard, of course I empty my fridge for him. <laughs> <laughs> if you do that for a cat, what do you do for visitors, human visitors? <laughs> yeah, two fridges. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come knocking at your door, Manuela. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. This was my kitty catty story. From last month I love it but that's how synchronicities and all of that magic works
Yeah, I was really amazed. I was like, where is this cat coming to me? And he didn't want to leave. He was so cute. Oh, I could have a zoo. I could have the dog who didn't want to leave. The cat doesn't want to leave. Nobody wants to leave my place. No. <laughs> so now you can zoom with the cat. <laughs> with the cat. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> Talk. <laughs> yes. Um, what shall we say? Um, is there anything, any stories you would like to share? Any magic stuff? Um, well, you know, there are lots of synchronicities. Um, I think uh, one of them was when I really wanted to rededicate myself to this work, healing, intuitive work, um, mediumship, I really, you know, had a conversation with God or the universe, um, you know, goes by different names, but it's really the same. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I said, well, if you really want me to do this work and recommit myself, um, I need to see a sign. And I said, let me sh tell you what my sign will be. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am telling God what sign I want to see. Um, I said, I want, I've want. i seen hummingbirds, but I've never seen a hummingbird feather. I would like to see a hummingbird feather. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as I was coming down the stairwell of where I live, I saw, I don't know how I saw it. It was so small. This teeny tiny little feather. Um. And I was with my dog and, you know, I was like, I picked it up and I'm like, this looks like a hummingbird feather, but I'm not 100% sure. So then, of course, I said to the universe, um, thank you for this, but I'm going to have to see the hummingbird feather come out of a hummingbird butt. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I can be convinced. And so sure enough, I was walking my dog one morning, we were on our way back home and a hummingbird like whizzed by my ear, like super fast. It was so close. It was like inches from my ear. And I looked back to see where it came from. And I saw three feathers. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I happened to catch uh, two of them, but the third one I couldn't find. But I literally asked for feathers to come off a hummingbird's butt. <laughs> and there it was. So I say, you know, have a relationship with not just your guides, but, mm -hmm. you know, with the universe or God. Um, I say God because it's the shortest. <laughs> um whatever name you want to call it um so source but everything is a relationship and you know it's about you know having that close conversation you know a communication and the universe will show you some amazing things mm -hmm. oh yeah. what a beautiful story i love feathers i have to pick up the feathers all the time <laughs> <laughs> me too and I have this special connection with hummingbirds um I live in an apartment complex in a very long dark hallway not so dark but long and um oftentimes I come home like this happened three times where a hummingbird was sick and it was right in front of my doorstep yeah. oh wow it was really strange yeah three times so of course I try to help the hummingbird but it's usually like too late um oh, yeah. I you know I take care of it and give it a proper burial and but I have a special connection with them oh maybe it's your power animal yeah <laughs> so sweet yeah I love to pick up feathers when I I was in Barcelona a couple of weeks ago and I saw feathers all over the place. Mm -hmm. and I always want to pick them up and then my husband said, like, oh, don't pick up. That's so disgusting. <laughs> you know, in the middle of the city, millions of right. people 
okay it's not yeah. in the in the woods or so in the forest it, it was like where 100 million people um um stepped on it yeah <laughs> but, then, awesome. but it was amazing and i think it's so so beautiful when we ask spirit to for support and give a sign or yeah yeah whatever. absolutely and i equate feathers with not just um source or god but um also angels yeah yeah i like angels yeah i have one here you cannot see it i have one right here a little oh. <laughs> a little angel <laughs> Cutest, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think. Is there anything you would like to share from your experience? Inspire someone who is watching our beautiful podcast? <laughs> well, I just think, you know, um, if you open yourself up to feelings um, in your senses, because a lot of times we're so busy doing life that we don't stop and just take a breath and see what we see, all the details and the colors in life. What do we hear? Like the birds chirping, you know, uh, hummingbirds flying. Um, there are so many different layers within life. And if you open yourself up to that, you, you're actually opening yourself up to your intuition because your intuition speaks to you in feelings and if for anyone who wants to heighten their own um, sense of intuition and even everyone is also we all have healing abilities you know we have the ability to heal ourselves when we cut ourselves we can um, heal it and you know it doesn't matter how extensive the healing needs to be we ha have that ability so but all of it starts with just opening up to everything the possibilities mm -hmm. right. yeah so. and, and yes absolutely and i totally agree with you that we are mindful of also the the little the little things in life like yes. is it the feather or sometimes even the music in the supermarket which is maybe um some people they don't even hear it but i always yeah. i'm always, i always try to be mindful because i always say oh Spirit is communicating with us through all these things, through music, through your, through our devices. Yeah, maybe yeah, a little absolutely. flower on the street. You know, it doesn't have to be big things or the clouds talk to us. Or numbers or numbers. Like, like for our guides, if we want to know their names, sometimes we'll see a name over and over and again. That might be because that's your guide telling you what their name is. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so many different ways yeah we just have to be mindful and inspire i would like also to inspire people to look at the little things of life not just to go like a tunnel the tunnel view just <laughs> open up welcome embrace everything every yeah. little cloud is perfect Absolutely. and everything is a message i always see messages <laughs> you do so, yeah, I mean, people don't realize how powerful they are. Mm -hmm. And of course, like working on yourself and getting messages for yourself, um, you might have a little bit of doubt. And that's why you would go see um, another specialist like Manuela or myself. Um, but people have their, their power to do that themselves. Um, but it's kind of like cutting your own hair. Sometimes there are blind spots. So you have to go see a professional. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah, oh, this was so beautiful. Yeah. So shall we conclude our podcast? Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It was nice to talk to everybody. Yeah, I would like to thank you for tuning in and joining the Living Harmony podcast. Thank you so much for your time. And yes, with that being said, I wish you all the best. And I will leave all the information, Yuson's link, her website in the description below. And I will upload this as soon as possible on YouTube. <laughs> I will leave some, some sequences on Instagram. And yes, with that being said, thank you so much for 
Thank you. Joining in, wishing you all the best and with love, light and prosperity to all of you and to you, your son. Take care and see you in my next podcast with another interesting lady. <laughs> and then I have to stop.